Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve longest common prefix, lead code number 14. So we want to write a function to find the longest common prefix string amongst an array of strings. And if there's no common prefix, you want to return the empty string. So basically what it means here is if you have this array of strings, well, the longest common prefix would be FL. Now the first two words start with flow, so that almost works, but it has to match all of the strings. So the longest consecutive matching of all of the letters is just the first two, which is FL. Okay, in this one, if you have dog and race car, okay, actually it doesn't even matter what car is over here. Clearly there's no common prefix even amongst these two because one starts with a D, the other starts with an R. So they have to have all of those exact same letters starting from the very beginning. Okay, so let's deal with that same example here. And the idea is that you would want to kind of check for each of the strings in order, you'd want to make sure that all of their letters match. So you'd want to make sure that the first letters match. Okay, we have at least F. Okay, do their second letters match? Yes, they do. Okay, we have FL. Do their third letters match? This is an O, this is an O, and this is actually an I. Okay, so we have that problem there. And so we would just want to return FL. So more mathematically or computationally, computationally, what we're really doing is actually just keeping a common index i. So it's going to make more sense if I kind of stack them up like this. So now it's pretty easy, actually. If you have an index i, which we would start at zero, well, we just need to make sure if they are all equal to each other. Now, it's actually really, really easy to check if all of these things are the same here. You have your index, and if this is, you know, string a, string b, and c, technically they'd be in a loop, and so it'd be something like, you know, the strings at zero or the strings at one and so on. But we'll just call this A, B, and C. Basically what you would do to make sure that all of their letters at the index matched is to just compare them to A. Because if they're not matching A, well then that means that one of them was different. Okay, so this strategy would mostly work. You would say, okay, we have I is good so far. You'd go over here, the L's are matching, it's good as well. But over here, you would hit a problem because this O matches, but this I does not match. Okay, you'd want to return kind of any of the strings because you know they're all kind of the same up until this point. So you just want to return any of the strings up until but not including I, that substring there. Now, that's pretty much the idea, but there is some interesting edge cases to deal with here. So if we kind of change it up here so that they are all looking like flow so far, far so they're all flow however if we make it look like this this is flower this is flows and we'll just leave this as flow. Well, this would kind of break our example here as is because you'd make sure that the letters match at this index. Okay, they do. They match over here, they match here, they match here, except then when you try to check this one, well, then this one's in bounds, this one's in bounds, but this is kind of an out of bounds error. You'd be trying to access that string at something that didn't exist. So before we kind of do any of this index magic, you'd want to find out the minimum length of any of the strings. So we'd want the minimum length and you could just kind of go through each of the words, get the length. This is a length of six. This is a length of five. This is a length of four. Okay, you could find that pretty easily and find the min length is four. That way, if you ever actually get kind of out of bounds there, if you know that the minimum length is four, aka that the last valid index for the strings would be three, it means we don't check and go out of bounds here. So if you actually get to that min length, because this would be zero, one, two, three, and four. If you actually get your index to that out of bounds, well, then you can just return early here. You can return any of the strings up until that point because they all are gonna look the same there. Okay, we wanna make sure we don't go out of bounds for any of the strings. So we'll get the minimum length of any of those strings. So we'll say min length is equal to, so far, the float of infinity. And we'll go through each of the strings. So for each S in the strings, if the length of s is less than our minimum length, okay, we found a new minimum. And so min length is going to equal the length of s. Then while i is less than our min length, we want to, for each of the strings again, we want to make sure that each of the strings at that index are all matching, aka we can actually just check if they're all equal to the first one. So if s at i is not equal to the first string at that index, well, that means that one of them had an issue. So we can actually just return s up until i, basically saying, okay, it was okay up until i, 
except now I hit a problem. So one of the strings at that index had a problem. This is actually exclusive. So this syntax automatically says all the stuff up until, but not including I. Meaning that even if there was a problem at the very beginning, if I is zero and we had a problem with the first character, okay, we're actually not even going to include that. And we'll actually automatically return the empty string from that. Okay, if we get through all of the strings here, then there was no problem. So we can simply do I plus equals one. And then from here, we do actually run into a couple of edge cases here. And I feel like it's just kind of best to show you as why they come up here. So this looks all okay so far. But when you go to submit this, one of the cases here we'll have is if you have the list that is just an empty string. So it makes you think that you could deal with just that. And we could try that if strings at zero is equal to the empty string, well, then you could just return the empty string. So we'll try to fix it with that. But that doesn't work. Because if you have just the string of a, well, then we're outputting null basically mean we're not actually returning anything at all, we're never returning. So really what the problem is, is it's actually that when we go through this and you never hit a problem, then we need to deal with that situation. And that basically just means return precisely this again. So if you never got the chance to do this because you never ran into a problem, you can actually just return that exact same thing at the end to force us to return that no matter what. And that's going to fix all of those edge cases. Okay, so this time complexity is going to be big O of N, where where n is the number of strings times m, where m is the minimum length of any of the strings, because we only go up until the minimum length, and we're clearly looping over all of those strings nested. Okay, and the space complexity of this is going to take up no space at all, we are not storing anything. Okay, so there's your code guys, drop a like if it was helpful, I hope it was, and have a great day. Bye bye.